Hi, my name is Ben Chubinay from Phoenix TS. I'm here with the great Reagan Edens. How are you doing, Reagan? Yeah, I'm fantastic. Thank you, Ben. That's great. Yep. You and I were both on the CMMCAB when it just got started. Correct. Back in late 2019, early 2020. 20, yeah, yeah. The founding members of the CMMCAB accreditation body. And, and now it's called Cyber AB. That's right. right? Rebranded. Yeah, I was the training chair and you were the standards chair. That's correct. Um, standards, I mean, that's just a lot of stuff. How it do is. you know all that stuff? I mean, you're just amazing. You have like all these details in your head right. of all the standards and the background and the, you know what, what everything means, this broad, broad knowledge. Where'd you get that? Well, you know, uh, prior to us starting the AB, right? Um, I spent several years in the in the DFR 7012 arena with controlled and classified information and ITAR as well. So very complex requirement, requirements on the ITAR side, and then navigating over the DFR 7012. You know, um, 2017 blossomed, right? And then the deadline there, and then I really took a hard look at this and saw the the absolute national security need, right? And then we dove, dove right in, but you know. Really, our time in the AB board, as difficult as it was, with the the, the pressures and, and growth and maturity, the reality is is that that 5,000 hours or so, that year that we just were working around the clock, really, that um, spending time with the, uh, my um, industry working group, we went through the requirements word for word, definition That's by definition. Right. I remember that. Yep. And that was really where, you know, um, DFR 7012 and CMMC are made in the trenches. It's yeah. made in the mud. And the details? Devil's in the details. The devil's in the details. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now you are heading the Industry Standards Council. That's correct. Right? Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so the goal of the Industry Standards Council is develop a safe harbor. So the challenge that we faced then and the challenge that we face now as we worked really hard with the industry working group and across the ecosystem to um, establish, okay, well, what is CMMC? How do you do it um, as far as the nuts and bolts of the assessing piece and the training piece, right? But now we're focusing on clarity and consistency across both the c 3 the assessors, the RPOs, um, registered provider organizations and the RPs, and now the CCAs and CCPs, right? You've got all of this complexity of individuals, and then we're like, you know, the the blind individuals, you know, grabbing hold of the elephant, right? Which part do I have, and which part do you have? So the challenge here is, is how does industry know what right looks like? Yeah. And so the idea is that the CMMC Industry Standards Council develops a safe harbor for not every answer, not the answer, but a way to do it. And so that you use as a point of navigation and confidence that you can say, okay, this is what right looks like in this set of circumstances, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do things differently for what we need to do, but in those differences, at least I can go back and I can touch what right looks like. So basically, if it wasn't for a standards council body right. that would define what is right and what is wrong, every assessor could have a whole different bias on how to evaluate controls across different industries, different totally. verticals, and so on. Okay. Yeah, so because based on your experience and my experience, we look at the world differently, totally right? Because you're, you know, let's say you're raised in a CMMI environment, and I'm raised in, you know, I'm a former DOD person, and, uh, you know, I was raised in the, in the NIST series. Yeah. So I'm going to see things differently than the way that you're going to see. Yeah. But we can, uh, the AB is able to capitalize on both of our sets of experiences because you bring maturity as an assessor, I bring maturity as an assessor, and yeah. now what we have to do is we have to reconcile what yeah. does right look like. And make that accessible. That's right. You know, and here we are at CIC 2023 That's right. uh, in San Diego, yeah. um, and I'm meeting all kinds of people. People are coming together. It's really kind of taking off this whole CMMC thing. Yes. People are starting to take it seriously. But I think what everybody wants to know is when is this thing going to become the law of the land? I right. mean, when is it? When is the final rule? What is your estimation from someone who is like in the know? Okay, so when we talk about clarity, right, and, and what are my responsibilities? I always think of right now. Don't think of CMMC as as the term of the thing. I am aspiring to that. We begin with the end in mind, right? Right. But the reality is, is that underneath the seventy twelve, I have to meet requirements. I'm an acne manufacturing. Underneath the seventy nineteen, I'm not eligible for my current contracts unless I meet those requirements. 
on the 7020, I need to be prepared for the government to, to ask me to prove that I meet the 7012 and 7019. And uh, so the 7020 uh, also includes the prime contractors. So those prime, are the DFARS rules. That these are, are the DFARS really cars, the contract clauses. That's yeah. right. So, the, so those are already the, the laws of the That's right, right now. Yeah. So I have to keep my eye on the ball. It's because as I aspire towards CMMC and getting ready for a third-party certifier, what are they really certifying me? They're certifying that I have done the 7012. I've uh, had the sufficient evidence for 7019 and 7020. Yeah. And then now I'm containerizing it for okay. CMMC. So right now the law is we have to self-certify. CMMC kind of then will have the assessors come in and certify us. That's right. When should we expect that? To okay. Happen? So the the when we look at that, we look at how does the timeline in the recent change in yeah. the MPRM rule, um, we were looking forward to an interim rule, and that's still a possibility. It is on the plate, although in my humble opinion, it's unlikely, right? And the interim rule said that we're going to release this in, in May, I think the adjusted yeah. timeline. Yeah. We're gonna, and then 60 days later, everyone's going to comment, and then wham, it would go into effect, and right. we would start this process. The reality, though, is is that's very complex, and we're not making we're not making changes to one rule. We're making ch actually adding a new rule, so we're making changes to the old rule to, to get it right, and then we're making um, a really up a new rule. Yeah. So, the, what OPM has said uh, that's uh, um, uh, that is the authority for um, this process of rulemaking, and um, and um, they say, okay, look. What we want to do is we need to take this process slow and steady and make sure that we get it right because of the substantial impact it has on industry. And so that means is could, this really won't really hit the streets most likely until late 2024 then? Yes. So the, the answer, the short answer to your question is, is taking these things into consideration. Uh, um, um, they said, okay, look, we are, it's not OPM. Um, why am I drawing a blank? OMB. OMB, thank yep. you. Yeah. So Office of Management, Office General Budget. General budget. Yeah. So um, um, OMB is saying, look, we're going to release the rule um, in May. We're going to tell you what the whole rule is. That's good because we need to know what that rule is because right. we have a very short runway if it's a year. Yeah. Right. We're going to be able to, we're going to take public comments, which is the right thing to do because right. they're going to be angst. Right. And then we're going to integrate that public comments with the DOD feedback. And then, and then we're going to work on that to see if we're going to make any additional changes. And then that will pop back up in, in ostensibly about a year time frame. Could it be longer? Very unlikely. Very unlikely. So, the, the reality is, is in August of 2024, that rule comes back up, rises yeah. back up, and now I have to meet the 7012, the 7019, the 7020, and yeah. the, the new, new rule. That's correct. And guess what? I mean, at that point, you better be compliant. So it's not like oh you, my should, gosh. you should wait till 24 to think about, oh, maybe I should worry about cybersecurity. Yeah. Because the, the, uh, the authority and responsibility by DOD policy is for the prime contractors to enforce the requirements. That's Always right. the first, right? That's right. So that That's truism started. is already started. That's right. Right. So it's very unlikely because, uh, remember, the who has the most to lose? Well, the, the you know national security interest, number one. Yeah. The DOD, of course, yeah. but the prime contractors have this tremendous responsibility pressure and right. pressure to get this right. Yeah. So you're going to see that pressure increase in a far more substantial way than waiting around for the, for the DOD to enforce it. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about billions of dollars in contracts and really the future of our country at stake in national security data. Well, that's a great place to end this. Thank you so much of for being here. Thank pleasure. you very much. Of course. That has really cleared up a lot for okay, us. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. See you later.